Alrighty. So maybe you're a huge fan of the dwarves in the Warhammer Fantasy Universe. Or maybe you made a doom stack in one of the Total War Warhammer games with just Trollhammer torpedoes. Or maybe you just like being an ironclad dwarf. Well, we got the perfect class for you. The Ironbreaker is one of the most reliable classes in the game. He's the best tank in the game, if we're just talking about a straightforward tank. And in this video, we're going to be going over the best builds for him and kind of the overall strategic approach to playing the Ironbreaker. Now, as far as your melee weapon goes, the best weapon for him is probably the dual hammers, um, but they're pretty easy to use and there's a lot of videos out there about them. So I want to talk about a very, very close second. And some people would even say this weapon is better, and that is the cog hammer. The cog hammer does everything the dual hammers do and then some. The only thing the hammers have over the cog hammer is that they attack faster, both heavies and lights, which means you're going to be staggering things faster, which makes it easier to use without getting hit. And admittedly, with the cog hammer, the heavy is pretty slow and you could get punished for that if you're not dodging diligently. So if we look at the stats real quick, the light attacks have a pretty good amount of cleave, a ton of stagger, a fair amount of damage, and it also has the tank attribute, which makes, which means you're pretty much going to cleave through any Skaven slave that's in front of you. And if we look at the heavies, the heavies are essentially just like using the Executioner Sword. They do a massive, massive amount of damage, and although this number isn't very high, it is going to stagger pretty much anything you hit with it. As always, we take block cost reduction, and we take swift slaying and attack speed to help out with those heavies and also to give us a little bit better horde clear ability. So yeah, that is, that's the cog hammer. Very straightforward, very easy weapon to use, but is backed up by some really, really good stats. As for alternatives, I would recommend the two-handed hammer. It does essentially the same thing that the cog hammer does, but the combos are reversed. So for light attacks, you would be attacking elites and then heavies for trash. And also, if you like running shield weapons, you could do that as well. I'm not a big fan of them. They're just too slow for me and they like slow your character down when you're attacking with them. I really find them a pain in the ass to use, but if that's your thing, totally go for it. So now we need to talk about our ranged weapon. And I would say for most of the time when you're just going into a quick play lobby, I would take the crossbow. And the reason for that is a lot of times you'll get stuck in situations where maybe there's only one other person in the game that has a weapon to snipe specials. It's just the way the game has been going lately with a lot of warrior priests running around, with rail knights running around, and also Sienna's mostly taking the core station staff. So there's a high chance that you will probably be one of the two people in your party that has a weapon that can actually snipe specials. Now, if your party already has two people that can snipe specials, then you want to take the troll hammer torpedo, which is part of what makes this class so damn fun. Now for the troll hammer torpedo, the blue stats I'd like taking are one power versus monsters and two power versus armored. And that's because those are mostly who you're going to be using this weapon on. Y yeah, you're going to be using it on specials, but you really don't need a damage boost for that. Um, but the power versus armored will help you at killing patrols, and power versus monsters is going to help you chunk away those bosses. One thing you need to know about this weapon is that it triggers grenade effects. So if you're running shrapnel and you hit a horde with it, then you know the whole horde is going to be affected by shrapnel. Which is part of what makes this weapon actually really good. It's not just a fun weapon, it's actually really good too. Okay, now with that out of the way, we can talk about the talents. This is kind of the standard Ironbreaker build. The first one we can talk about is the level 15 talent. Um, if you really don't trust your team and you really want to have more damage for yourself, you can take Smiter. But honestly, I like running Bulwark because with the Coghammer, we're going to be staggering a lot, a lot of enemies. 
And for the strategy that we're using, and more about that later in the video, Bulwark is going to be working perfectly for that. In fact, this strategy kind of revolves around Bulwark. Gromoral Curse will make it so you're just CCing more than you already are. And that way defense is going to help you in those panic situations. And for the level 30 talent, you do have some options. If you were running Onslaught, I think this one is actually a pretty good one to take because there's a lot of bosses in that mode. And if you can uh, continually keep aggro of one of them, then it's going to make it a lot easier on your team. And Booming Taunt is good too if you want to take it. If you really want to, if you really kind of want to lean into that tank roll, it's really good. But honestly, Jang Barazi Oath uh, gives the ult extra functionality in that anytime your team just needs a boost of damage you can throw this out other than that you want to make sure you're taking health on your necklace and you want to make sure you're taking shrapnel on your trinket i'll post a pinned comment with the full builds in the comment section so you can get a finer look at these more uh nitpicky stats i don't like to go over these in the videos as much because honestly a lot of this stuff is just very nitpicky to me the stuff that really matters is kind of your weapon choice and how you're actually playing the game. The numbers will help, of course, but being a good player is always going to be better. So without further ado, let's get into some gameplay and talk strategy. So earlier we talked about Bulwark and why we're taking it on this build, and the reason we're taking it is because with the Ironbreaker, you want to be right up in the Horde's face with a Linesman. Uh, somebody who can do a ton of damage uh, cleaving through hordes and killing elites like it's nothing. So the perfect example is the mercenary. Like you can see in this clip, we got a few chaos warriors and elites and we were able to just absolutely chop through it because with the ults and bulwark giving mercenary just a little bit of extra damage and also the crazy, crazy damage from the heavies from both the executioner sword which the mercenary is using and the cog hammer this situation was just not a problem at all i ended up tanking a overhead but since we're playing ironbreaker it wasn't even a big deal and here's another example of us just cutting through trash this was earlier in the match when we had two bots and you can see how fast how fast these hordes go down um Combining Bulwark and the Horde Clear ability of both the Cog Hammer and the Executioner Sword just makes these hordes absolutely trivial. And granted, most parties don't need help clearing hordes, but it's important that you're there in the face of the horde and staggering everything so your linesman can do more damage. And here we have an example of another uh, different team comp where we've got a bounty hunter and a huntsman and a handmaiden. Now, ideally, we would want to be sticking with the handmaiden and overlapping DPS with her, but she was kind of playing her own game, um, wasn't really on the same page as me. So instead, what you can do in situations like that is stick to the rule of two. And all that means is you just want to stick with somebody. You want to make sure nobody's alone. Um, if I'm sticking with the bounty hunter, then he can shoot over me. He's got the shotgun pistols. And if we're the huntsman, we're just protecting him. And if we're the handmaiden with the handmaiden, then we're going to be doing a lot of horde damage. And to get more into the specifics of the gameplay, uh, it's probably good that I show you what not to do, how not to play Iron Breaker. So I just ulted, I pulled this whole horde, there's some elites in there, and I just keep swinging, I'm not playing defensively at all. In fact, I'm fishing to try to kill that elite. I'm in a terrible, terrible position, and I'm not playing nearly defensive enough. Now, there's a, there's a counterpoint to this, in that you don't want to ult and just hold block. If you were doing that, you are not being useful. So ideally what you want to do is first you want to be in a good position when you ult, or you could ult while you're in a bad position, and then pull the horde over to a good position. And then once you're there, you just want to make sure you're pushing a lot and dodging a lot and you're you're hitting as much enemies as you can with your attacks because again, the goal is to stagger everything in front of you and sitting there and blocking is not doing that. You're not helping by doing that. And here we'll see a good example of what you can do to bosses. Um, now we have a bounty. This is the game with the bounty hunter and a huntsman. You would figure they would be demolishing this boss. I don't know why they aren't, but uh, don't ever go for a light attack like that. That was terrible. Um, 
But with with, with the Trollhammer Torpedo, we can out damage both of them. We ended up doing more boss damage than both of them in this game. And it's really simple. All you do is you just want to make sure you're in a good spot. Make sure you have space to reload. And you're just blasting away at the boss. And it should be said that alternatively, if you're not rolling Trollhammer and Torpedo, or maybe you just want to lean into that tank roll a bit more, you could go for trying to keep aggro of the boss. And in that case, you're just simply trying to dodge and, you know, block and not take damage, but also get damage in where you can. A really good snapshot of how good the Iron Breaker actually is, is at dealing with patrols. Now, you want to get right in there, right into the middle of the patrol and ults. And um, if you're running Trollhammer or Torpedo, you're going to want to shoot it first, so they're all affected by Shrapnel. And so, between Shrapnel and the extra damage from your ult, the 20% buff, the patrol is just not going to be a problem. And you'll notice that I didn't just sit there and block. I'm actually attacking pretty aggressively. And part of that was because the battle wizard was ulting and they were all staggered anyway. But in a patrol situation like that, it's actually best to be really aggressive. Uh, you have aggro, but as long as you're dodging and, you know, being aware of what's trying to hit you, then you should be okay. So yeah, that is the Iron Breaker, one of the funnest classes in the game and also one of the best classes in the game. One of my personal favorites as well, partly because he just looks so damn cool. If I said something you disagree with, please say something in the comments. I actually like hearing your guys' disagreements because you're actually adding to the conversation. I don't know everything about this game, I'm not even the best player, but I do love making videos for Vermintide. I appreciate you all spending your time watching, listening to me talk about Vermintide. If you like the video, please like it, please subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.